Hey, Shane, appreciate your time. Um, I, I know Mike has, has spoken highly of you this offseason, said that when he's in a different room, maybe you're going to be the voice for the defense. C can you speak to maybe the confidence that he has shown in you, and what do you think that means for, him, uh, you know, I guess an a, a job description role when he says you're going to kind of be the voice when he's not there? Yeah, I mean, uh, ultimately my job – First and foremost is to get these outside linebackers to play at a high level and develop them and continue to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do and contributing the way they're supposed to on our defense. But uh, Mike's got a lot on his plate, so he needs somebody to help him out. Um, and I've been with him a long time. The one thing I will say, I think I'm a, an extension of him when it comes to our defense and what he expects and what he wants. I think that's where his confidence and comfort level comes with me just because we've been around each other for a while now. Um, so I think that's kind of where it stems from. But ultimately for me, man, it's it's about these outside linebackers first between myself, uh, Matt Edwards, who's helping out with the inside and outside backers, uh, making sure they're playing at a high level and then doing what I can to echo and reiterate some of the messages of what Braves wants done defensively as a unit. And I want to ask you one on DeAndre Walker. I, I know he's a guy that probably – could have benefited from the offseason uh, after missing last season. But from what you've seen in him, what are you hoping to see from him in camp and what does he need to show you, the team in camp? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for whenever we start start back in terms of uh, going out there and actually practicing and seeing how he performs. Uh, I think he's learned and has come a long way in terms of his mental, mental aspect and understanding what we're trying to do with the position and defensively. Um, but ultimately – it's about going out there and doing it. So I'm excited to see. I think he's got some tools to work with. He looks like an outside linebacker. He's what we're looking for. It's just him being able to go out there and execute and do it at a high level. Uh, Teron? So, Coach, uh, with, with Vic Beasley, there were some different things being said about his work ethic when he was in Atlanta. Uh, is that something that you thought about as far as, like, as you – develop your approach on how you're going to work with him as an individual? Uh, honestly, I, I haven't ever even met Vic. I guess I think it's unfair for me to even have any assumptions about anything, whether he works hard, whether he doesn't work hard. Like once we get him here, whenever that is, um, we'll kind of see. And I, the one thing I will say, I think our culture as a team and as a defensive unit, like if you ain't a hard worker, it's probably not going to work out too well, you know? And, I think a lot of guys can form and when, no matter whether they are or they aren't, like they're going to fit into our culture and it's kind of the expectation level here. Um, I'm going to go about the same way I go about coaching all these other guys. Like there's going to be high expectations. So whether you make it or not make it, if you're not a hard worker, you're probably not going to reach my expectation level. So that's just the nature of the beast. But, uh, the one thing I will say, I think just our culture in general, new guys, whoever they are, whether it's Vic or anybody else, um, I think we've got a good culture established, established here from, from John Robinson, Coach Vrabel, from the top down in terms of what we're looking for and what we want from this team. And then from an X and O standpoint, he did a really good job just as far as like those, those TE stunts. Is that something that you guys would, would like to, to utilize him on because, as I said, especially last year, he did a really good job from that perspective. Yeah, absolutely. I think anytime, um, anytime you watch these guys and you feel like they do things well, like we want to incorporate those things. Like we're trying to get every single player here in a position to do what he does best um, and ultimately help help us play good defense and help the team win. So, I mean, if somebody does something good, we're going to try to give them every opportunity to do that in the games and in practice and kind of go from there. Uh, John Glennon. Hey, Shane. Um, I was going to ask you, um, I guess, uh, on the on the corner situation as well, um, you know, with Logan gone, obviously someone's going to have to step in there at slot. Uh, I know, as you said, your first responsibility is the backers, but wondering if you could take a shot also there at, at uh, you know, who might be the most likely candidate at this point to kind of get the bulk of the snaps in slot, uh, would that be a Dory Jackson or, or um, you know, is it still TBD? Yeah, I think uh, I think once we get out there come mid-August, I think we're going to probably try a bunch of different guys out there. 
we've got a bunch of guys on the roster right now that we feel comfortable with in terms of competing for that role. Um, so it'll be interesting. We're going to have to be creative as a staff defensively, um, just in terms of rotating guys and giving guys a chance with, with this new structure that we have in terms of practice and everything else. But we got to find ways to put different guys in those situations so they can show what they can do and ultimately compete to see who, who earns that role. I had one quick follow on a different tack. Uh, um, Jeffrey Simmons, uh, wondering, uh, again, I know you guys haven't been on the field, but uh, just in terms of, of getting a look at him maybe and, you know, spending some time with him, have you noticed a difference in, in uh, you know, given the extra time that he's had to, to heal and, and strengthen up uh, from, from last year? Yeah, like right now we haven't even seen those guys yet come back in because they've been in protocol. I think, I think their first time actually allowed in the buildings tomorrow in terms of, us being able to at least see them. But, um, I mean, just like you guys, we've seen the, we've seen the videos, we've seen some of that stuff. So I think uh, with Coach Williams and myself and Braves and everybody on our defensive staff, we're excited to get them back and actually have a healthy Jeff Simmons who has confidence in his health and everything else. So um, we're excited to see where he's at once he gets back in here. Uh, Luke? Hey, Shane, you all lost a couple pieces at inside linebacker over the offseason that played uh, big roles for you all, both on defense and special teams. I was wondering, do you see that as maybe a position where because of just the volume of what you've lost, is that somewhere where maybe an undrafted player or, or someone whose name we're not familiar with yet might have a chance to make an impact? Yeah, I think with all these guys, it's like we had this conversation the other day, like, if these guys weren't here to compete to try to make the team, and I know they're a little behind the eight ball compared to most years, but, like, they're still here. Like, they still got every opportunity ahead of them to make this team. We're not cutting until, I think, September now. So there's going to be some time frames. They're all going to get plays and get reps. And, um, obviously, we lost some guys in that room. And whoever it might be, whether it's second-year guys, whether it's rookies, uh, somebody's going to have to step up and kind of claim that role. And I think special teams plays a big part in that, too. Uh, Paul Kaharski. Hey, Shane. Um, how much have you gotten to know Vic despite not meeting him? Yeah, so obviously we had the spring and we'd have some Zoom meetings and we'd do all that type of stuff and talk. I mean, it's just it's a unique situation um, in terms of getting – that's your first interaction and talking to them and you got all the other guys around too. So it is a little unique, but I mean, we've had good conversations. We've talked about things throughout the spring and I'm uh, looking forward to getting them here. Is he uh, uh active participant in that stuff? We hear he's kind of a shy laid back guy. When you're in a meeting room in a zoom situation with a guy you haven't met, like you said, I'm curious about how a how a shy guy might be in that kind of situation. Yeah, he, I think as he, he got more and more comfortable as the spring went in terms of that. Um, honestly, we probably met with him a lot more one-on-one -on -one than in the group setting, even just because all the other guys have been here, you know? So we're kind of trying to kind of expand from 100-level learning to 200-level learning, so to speak. So in terms of being able to – expand their horizons a little bit where Vic was starting out at ground zero in terms of our defense. Um, There's probably a little bit more one-on-one -on -one than even group. For him. Thank you. Yep. Uh, David Beauclerc. Shane, as I understand that you started coaching in college when you got hurt. Had you been thinking it at some point that, that you were going to get into coaching or was that sort of an accidental detour that has led you to this point? Yeah, ultimately, man, I uh, I thought I was going to be a high school coach, to be honest. And then uh, I got injured and had to do something to keep my scholarship. And uh, Paul Johnson asked me if I wanted to help out and stay on the program. And uh, from there, some other guys got jobs and took the GAs away. And there's a GA job. And it kind of just went from there. So much like Dean. I think Dean used to say he wanted to be a high school coach, too. So. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> Eric? 
Hey, Shane, I just wanted to, to kind of follow back on, you know, you being uh, the, the voice uh, in the room. Are you planning, are you preparing at all uh, to call plays at, at any point during the season? Will you, you know, get practice at that during, during practices, uh, walkthroughs uh, during training camp? Yeah, I think uh, right now we're just, everything's scripted. We're going through everything as a defensive staff. And, I mean, everything's there as we progress into practice and there's some overse the unscripted periods. I think that's something me and Braves are just going to kind of work through and see where things are at and uh, just comfort level with how we want to be able to get the call onto the defense. And again, ultimately, like, I'm an extension of Mike when he ain't around. So however that ends up playing out, um, we'll just have to see as we kind of work through it here once we get out there and get in some of these competitive situations where we actually have to call some things that aren't scripted. And, and just one other question on an unrelated topic. I'm curious about your evaluation of, of Reggie Gilbert last season and how big a boost he could be just as a depth piece for that unit. Yeah, man, I was pleased Reg came in and he actually gave us something. Like we, he, he got here late. Um, he was playing catch up and he was coming off a knee injury. Um, but he came in and he, he produced and he contributed for us. So I'm excited to get him back. I think he feels good health wise. Um, so I'm excited to hear he's here. He has a veteran presence. He's smart. I think he can play multiple positions for us and do multiple things. So um, he, he definitely has some value in our room, just being a little bit of an older guy and being around a little bit. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited about him. I'm excited to see what he does here this uh, this training camp. Uh, Gentry? Yeah, Shane. Uh, obviously, with, with Dean no longer around, that's a – you know, that's a, it's a pretty influential guy that, that you're having to replace. And without the clear line of succession there, I mean, you're on here getting asked about cornerbacks and, and D-line. I mean, has your role changed in terms of needing to take a little more oversight on the entire defense? I would say when, when, when Mike's not around, um, I mean, just so we can function and get through what we have to get through, um, somebody's got to take the role in terms of organizing the meeting and making sure we're checking all our boxes off as we prepare for practice, for the season, everything that comes with that. Um, but like I guess I think I said in the spring, man, we got a great defensive staff. Uh, I mean, I, we all lean on each other with all that stuff. Has has done it. I mean, he's been a head coach. He's been defensive coordinator. I mean, I'm very familiar with Midget and Book, and I've been around all these guys for the most part other than Has. I've been around all these guys at some point in my career. So, I mean, I, I think as a group, we're doing a good job in terms of collaborating as we work through some of this stuff. But yeah, like when push comes to shove and we got to kind of move on to the next next task, like I'm going to push it that way. Uh, Terry? Got a couple here for you, Shane. First of all, uh, in regards to how things will, will work, you've said that you'll be an extension of Mike and be his voice when when he's not around. How will that relate to your involvement in, first of all, putting game plans together throughout the week and then the play calls on, on game day? Yeah, I think uh, I don't see game plan being much different. I mean, Mike was involved last year. Um, I mean, obviously, not to the extent that he's going to be this year with, with having Dean. But he was still involved. And I mean, that, when we game plan, it is a group effort through and through. Like everything, we're talking through everything together. We're coming up with the best plan because ultimately every coach has to be comfortable with what we want to do and feel comfortable teaching it to their players and that their players can actually execute it on Sunday. So that's a, I think that's a group deal. So I don't see that changing a whole lot. Um, in terms of play calls uh, on game day, like I said, I think that's just something we got to work through here this training camp and kind of see where things are at um, in terms of what Braves feels like he's comfortable doing on game day and everything else. So I, I think that's going to be something that we work through here this next month before we get to September 14th. The other thing was uh, – Derek Roberson, he came on last year at the end of the season, uh, had uh, some some good uh, pass rushes and things like that, even uh, played a lot in the playoff games and all. What's the next step for him to become more of a, a, a factor in the rotation? Yeah, I think uh, for him, man, it's ultimately just developing, 
on first, second down. I, I think he can rush, and he's still got to improve as a rusher. There's things that he, he's got to take it to the next level, but that's where he's flashed early on in his first year. Um, but with missing the spring and kind of with everything going on now, like he's got to turn the page pretty quick and get back here, and hopefully he's been working this offseason just in terms of his development in the first, second down run and pass game. I think that's that's really where I want to see him take the next step and where ultimately he, he will develop a little bit bigger role. Uh, last couple, Shane. Uh, John Glenn. Yeah, Shane, um, obviously no preseason games this year. Uh, considering you guys are, are working in some new assistant coaches and, and uh, you know, some, some players also at key positions, um, what's the challenge there of being able to do that uh, smoothly without any preseason games? Yeah, I think you've got to be creative with how you practice and you've got to simulate as many game-like situations as you can for these guys. Um, I mean, it's, it's, a unique, it's a unique year. The timeline's totally different. The, everything, I mean, it's all different. We talk about it being the new norm and we've got to get adjusted to it, but I think in terms of the schedule, it just comes down to being creative and Braves is already on top of all that stuff. He has a plan together and it's it's finding ways to simulate games in practice and doing it safely, smart, all that comes with that. Um, but we got to put these guys in competitive situations to see who, who rises to the occasion and who kind of disappears, so to speak. We got we to gotta find ways to, to figure out who, who we want here when, when it's all said and done. I wonder if there's uh, any example that, that you might be able to think of that, that you can do that, um, you know, simulating games further than, than, than most years. Yeah. I mean, we've done it in the past with some of those scrimmages, whether it was at Centennial or, or a stadium scrimmage or all, all those types of things. I think we got to make sure we do some of that stuff. Um, I mean, we were just talking even for the coaching staff, like how we're going to operate on game day. We're not having all those practice runs either. So, Whatever it might be, like, I think we, we have to find a way to simulate it in terms of, like, it's going to be on September 14th when we go to Denver as best we can um, just to get a trial run, make sure everybody's on the same page. Like, little things from where you go on warm-ups, like, all that stuff goes unnoticed, but you want to make sure you cover your bases so these guys are prepared and not, not all over the place when they need to be focused on winning a football game in Denver. Last one, uh, Jim White. Shane, I know Coach is always looking for different ways to help players improve their technique, help them improve as a player overall. You've always been a hands-on coach. I mean, with COVID-19, any challenges? Have you thought about even things you'll need to do differently moving forward? Do you think it's it's still yeah. – you can still operate and teach this way you have over the years? Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see how this thing goes. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'll have a mask on at practice if I have to have a mask on at practice. Um, and ultimately, whatever whatever these guys need, these players need, and make them feel safe. Like our organizations went out of their way from the top down, man. Like it's a, it's it's unbelievable what they've done. The planning, the structure, the facility, the protocols and procedures that are in place. Like ultimately, it's about the players and whatever they feel safe with. Um, ideally, I want to be able to coach how I've done in the past. But at the same time, like. If they're not comfortable with that, then I'll have to adjust and go from there. Because um, the last thing I want them to have to worry about is is all that stuff when I'm worried worried about them putting their hands in the right spot and some of those other things that we could probably get away with doing a different way if we need to.